Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and collectibles. I'm going to sit you down with one of our regular dealers. <laughs> They're going to try and buy your treasures off you with a cash offer on the table today. Another fiver, and it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to encourage you to gamble and place the same goods into an auction in the hope that we will get a little bit more money there. Today the show comes to you from Creethorpes in North Lincolnshire. Just look at this crowd. They've been here since early morning. They've brought along their treasures. They are determined to do business. They want to walk away with the real deal. As the hot new attraction in this seaside town, our dealer's den is bustling with locals, young and old. And a little chap is first up for Karen, and she's bound to wind him up. You lovely man. <laughs> I love what you've brought in. Tell me all about it. I've had it about 18, 19 years. It was um, given to me by my father. It was left to him by oh, his gosh. uncle. It's been upstairs in my loft now for about 18 years. Can Morris. you ever remember playing with it? Oh, yeah, when I was a kid, yeah. Do you think it still goes? It still goes, yeah. Shall we have a look? Yeah. Go on, I'll let you do the biz. I'm clearing the decks here. I don't know what this thing's going to do. Oh, wow, look at that. Yes, love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, I love it. Well, first of all, layman. They were going about 1900, 1910. Yeah, uh, Lehman is, is, is a very good make in German toys, yeah. yeah. Tin plate cards, yeah. I just love it. And the colours are still good, aren't they? Because when you think how old this I is... I thought that with the, the weather, with the getting at it, it's, um, you know, the, the started rusting. I didn't think it'd be worth a lot of money. It's not. To be honest. Yes, it is. No. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no not I supposed know, to say I, that. I know, I know <laughs> uh, someone made me an offer for it. Five years ago. Yeah, and what was that? I just told him about it. Oh, I'm not saying that. Why not? Go on, Len. He made me an offer. Friends, you can tell me. Well, he made me an offer at five years ago, £150. I'm, I, I'm straight away, I'll offer you more of that. I'll yeah. tell you that straight yeah. away. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't offend you with that sort of offer. This is great, too, to have the original um, instructions. What a treat. I love it. Right. OK, I better get some money out then, haven't I? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. 20, 40, 260. A bit more. I'm putting a really good price down. It's much more than 150. You already quit that. Yeah, I know, but that was a long good while ago. A little bit more. There's another £20 there, Len. £280. Hello, David. Well, first of all, I'm going to say, Len, what a bobby dazzler. Circa 1900. It's all there, very delicate. The parasol is there, the hat is there, the wheels, it's moving. It even has its instructions. I can tell you that the independent valuers, they're saying 250 to 3 In my opinion, worth a little bit more but it's your gamble. If you go to auction, you might guess a little bit more, but it's a gamble. Thank you. You go another 20. <laughs> right in there, Len. <laughs> Straight in there. Another 20. You'd be happy with that. I'll 20. be happy with that, another 20. All right. You know how much I want to own this, don't you? <laughs> yes, it's no. fairly obvious. <laughs> I am delighted to give you 300, because I love it too. Thank, Thank you very you, much Len. indeed. I'm so pleased you're happy with the deal. Thanks yeah. very Thank much. Thank you. Karen got her man. Yeah. Hello. And from boys' toys to Tim with something for the ladies. You've brought a compact along today. I have. Can I have a look at it? You can. Right, let's have a look at this. Now, this is going to be 1950s. OK. 
Then that's for your cigarettes. Yeah. That's for your lipstick there. Mm -hmm. And that. Nice bit of action there, wasn't it? <laughs> that's for your powder. Yeah. So we've got these little sieves in there. And then that's a little musical. I don't know why you quite need music when you're smoking, doing your face and putting your lipstick on. It's relaxation. <laughs> Do you find that relaxed, Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> I might. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. Nice condition. The strange thing about it is there's no name on it, is there? You'd think something so nice as that mm. would have a name on it, you know, like Stratton was a, a, a big maker of compacts. Right. Um, have you had it a long time? It actually belongs to my mum, um, mm. and she bought it for her mum as a gift when she went over to Cologne in Germany. Really? It's probably European, that's why it doesn't have the name Stratton right. on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but by the look of it, she never used no, it. She's no, she's never used it, has she? has been kept in a cardboard box in the wardrobe, yeah. so... Right. Mm -hmm. 20 pounds. No. 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 That was very defiant. No. Very defiant. <laughs> very defiant. <laughs> 30 pounds. No. I mm. must be getting close. I'll tell you when you are. <laughs> I feel I'm getting close. I feel I am. I can feel it. <laughs> if I take that away mm. and put that in 40 pounds. You need to be a bit higher. Right. Just to take away. <laughs> 40 quid to take away. Got to give my mum some and feed my poor son. Oh, <laughs> give it a rest, Rebecca. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. What's your son called? Daniel. Daniel. That's a fiver for you. <laughs> there you go. And that's 40 quid for the cotton pack. <laughs> Have we got a deal, Rebecca? Okay, we've got a deal. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Rebecca. <laughs> bit of pocket money secured the deal. There's plenty of exciting items coming through the door. And dealer George could be the owner of this fascinating trio, awarded to a family war hero. And um, what have you brought for me? Uh, sort of self-explanatory. Also brought some medals. Uh, did me grands like. There was a uh, great, great uncles like that. Right. I don't know too much about them, really. I just brought them along. So they're all his? Yeah. So this one and this one, yeah. both Boer War medals. Uh, and we tell the marked here, Transvaal, Orange Free State, Cape Colony. This one, South Africa 1902, South Africa 1901. And then we move on to a First World War medal, an RAF medal. Yeah. Um, and we know, you've told me they belong to your grandmother's great uncle. Yeah. And we've got a name, Jay Wardle. They've all got the same name as well, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they've all got the same so they're name. So a group, which will actually add to their value. So why are you selling them? Because uh, I just brought them out for the day and my mum said I could take them along so you can yeah. get out for them. Yeah, have you got an idea of what you want for them? I've got a rough idea, yeah. OK, fair enough. Probably a secret. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Um, I think it's time to get some money out. I'm going to offer you... One, two, forty quid. Nah, no way. Guys thinking twenty quid each. So if I put that on, one, two, three of them, there's sixty quid. Nah. No. Watch out. I've come in here this. now because I probably need to give you some guidance. Sale room at the moment, medals are doing very well. Three to four hundred pounds is the estimation from the independent valuer and the auctioneer. And I'll tell you what's so interesting about these medals. Two are Boer War, but he also went on to fight in the First World War, and he was also in the early uh, Royal Air Force. Yeah. So, interesting and quirky, they should bring a price at the auction. So, we know what they're worth, but they're not really my cup of tea. Yeah. Um, that's why I only offered sixty pounds. Oh, they were worth more to three, four hundred. Yeah. I really do think the best thing to do will be to go to auction. Ah well, I'm not going to take sixty quid. Am I? You're not. What are you going to do? It's got to be auction. I mean. Good for you, man. Best uh, of luck to you. Yeah. Cheers, fella. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
So Joe is the first to head to auction. How will these medals be rewarded as they go under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young? Last call, then we're going to sell at £200. Now, on the dealer's day, Joseph, you brought along three medals. Yeah. They belong to your uncle, Private J. Wardle. What did you think they were worth? Well, 50 quid each. OK. So... OK, well, you were offered 60 quid by George, I think. I came in and said, look, they're worth a bit more than that. Have a gamble, take them to the auction. They're coming up now. Are they going to make more than 60 quid? Of course they are. Here they are now. Who's going to start me at uh, starting 300 for them? 300, two to go then, surely. Couple of hundred, 200 pounds, anybody? 200, 150, thank you, madam, at 150, at 150, 60, 170, 180, 190, 200, 20 now, 220, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. Lots of people, bids with the porter, bids in the room. At 300, at 300 pounds, on my left at 300. Are we all done and finished? We're selling this time then and going at 300 pounds. 300 pounds, gavel has gone down. Uh, are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, can't complain, can can't I? Can't complain, <laughs> OK. Take away the commission and you've got 255 pounds yeah. to take home. Are you satisfied with that? Yeah, I'm happy as Larry, yeah. Well, nice I'm surprise. Happy. Joseph thought they were worth 50 quid. They made 300 quid under the gavel. Um, take home £255. That was the real deal. Coming up, dealer David Hayton lays his cards on the table. I like it very much. It's exactly the kind of things I'm always looking for. But will he lay down enough cash? One more. How much do you want? I like it. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Cleethorpes, a popular location for fun in the sun. And there's a golden glow over on David's table. Nice to meet you, So too. you brought a nice little object in yes, here? Yes, I love it. It's so tell nice. me all about it. I just saw it in a jeweller shop window in 1980. Yes. And it was quite expensive to me at that time. Yeah. There it is, and it's a double gold sovereign holder. Yes. Made about 1900-ish, 19, yes. could be 1910, 20. Yeah. And it'll hold quite a few sovereigns in there, wouldn't it? Yeah. And this has uh, certainly escalated in its value since you bought it, I'm sure. I like it very much. It's exactly the kind of things I'm always looking for. Um, they make these in silver and metal. Yes, I've seen them in silver. But this is nine karat gold. Very, very nice, Pam. Thank you. Well, I shall have to get some steam on here to buy this off oh, you. you. I will. can see that. Yes. Well, I'll get the dosh out, shall I? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Is it a yes no. or is that a no? No, that's a no. Nobody ever says yes straight away. It's funny, isn't it? No, but they don't. <laughs> no. I well, think it's, it's just sweet. my sort of thing. 120. £140. I don't think that's quite as much as what I'd hope to get for it. I've come in here, Pam, now, because yeah. I think we're at a crucial stage of the deal. Let me give you an idea what our independent valuers say. They say 150 to 225 Now, oh. David's got a good eye, good professional, knows what he's doing. He's probably licking his lips and thinking, what a cracker. <laughs> and that's what I'm thinking as well. So. I'm going to say to you, I think it's worth a bit more than that. Yeah. And I think once that's put in front of like-minded dealers like David, I think they'll all think the same thing. They'll all think, what a cracker. Well, David's absolutely right, Pam, yeah. and I'm not going to mess you about here. I'm going to say to you, 160, 180, 200 pounds. You're not smiling, Pam. You're not going to take 200. So I'm going to say, <laughs> 220. One more. How much do you want it? I like it. I don't want to give another ten or more. 230 pounds, and I'd want to sell this for uh, a small profit. Yes, I think I will accept. Have you got a bit of profit? Yeah. Good. And thank you very much for bringing it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Pam can celebrate that deal in style. Next, it's big, bold and beautiful, so of course Dave and auctioneer Colin Young want to get in on the action. 
And you brought in this huge Royal Worcester figure. Yes, that's correct, yeah. Now, why are you selling this, John? Um, well, it's partly to fund my son's insurance on his car. He's um, about to take his test and buy his first car. Mm, with a bit of assistance yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the bank of mum and dad then. Yeah, or the bank of Tim, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we'll do our best, we'll do our best. And do you know anything about this figure? Uh, well, yes, I know it's uh, Royal Worcester. Um, approximately 1897 and it was modelled by James Hadley whose so uh, signature is on the back. Is. Let's just turn around and she's, she's quite weighty as well isn't yeah, she? Yeah she's very very weighty I can attest to that. And if we see there that's his signature there. That's right yes. And I'm going to turn her over so we can see the Royal yeah, Worcester sure. mark as well if I can lift her up. And that's the Royal Worcester mark there registration number and put her back up there. Now, have you had this figure a long time? Uh, I've had it approximately eight to ten years. Eight I, to I ten years. Probably eight years, yes, something like now, that. Now, when you bought it, yes. did you know they had some restoration on I it? I didn't, actually, no. Yeah. If we look up here, yes. this hand has been restored yes. there. And I've also sort of had a quick look over it. I think a little piece here has been restored, and possibly that hand as well. I think it's been done very well. It has been done very well, mm. but it, it is a huge detriment to mm. it, in my opinion. OK. Well, I'm staring at this piece of Worcester, and I'm about to say, Colin, wow. Substantial piece, isn't it, David? Yeah. What's your first impression of the figure? You can't help but be impressed by it. It's a good sizeable piece, it's mm. Worcester factory, it's just typical Hadley. You don't even have to look for the signature on it, it just tells you exactly who sculpted it. Um, say a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds. I think we've got a reasonable chance coming to auction with it, but if you go any higher than that, you're going to start scaring people off. Okay. Tim's a man who does fairs. Let's see what he puts on the table. I'm going to make you an offer. Right. See what we can do. It's a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, three hundred pounds, four hundred pounds, five hundred pounds, six hundred pounds. I think you've bought to about there now, Tim. It's this. It's... There was a time when we'd be having fisticuffs trying to buy this in the sale room. That's how good it is. Mm -hmm. The time is not as good now, but I would have to say, you don't often see a Bobby Dazzler like that, a piece of Royal Worcester, which is fabulous. 1,000 to 15 is the low estimate. 15 to 2 is the more ambitious estimate. Have you declared what you paid for this a few years ago? I haven't divulged okay. that, no. But you paid over £1,000, I'm oh, yeah, sure? Oh, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, a lot more. OK, so not enough there, Tim. If you want to be in the ballpark, we need to get up over £1,000. Otherwise, we're going to gamble and go to auction. Thank you, David. I hear what David's saying. Mm. And I do think that the estimate's a little bit on the bullish side. But I will increase this offer. OK. 650, 700, 750, 800 pounds. No, that's not enough, Tim, I'm sorry. 900 pounds, 1,000 pounds. I'm, I'm sorry, Tim, I can't let sorry. it go for that. No? No. Look, I'll, I'll, this is the last 1,050 pounds, John. I don't think you're anywhere near, to be honest, no. Tim. Probably the best place for it is is, is the auction okay. room. Well, thank you very yeah. much for bringing thank that you along, and, and good luck. Pleasure to meet you. And you. The restoration puts him off, but how will the bidders react? Thank you very much. Now, John, we got into a bit of a haggling match with Tim. Yeah, he right, got yeah. up to 1,050 and you turned that down. I did, yeah. I didn't think that was enough. OK, £1,300 is the reserve. Yes, that's right. The problem is, in today's market, with a restored hand, is it going to make it? Here we go. Let's yeah. see what happens. Who's going to star me at, uh, well, £1,000 for it? 1000 surely. Five to go, then a lot of interest in this already. 500 bid at 500, 550, 600, 650, 7, and 50 now, 800. 
850 now. It's at 850. It is at no money here in the sale room. Are the buyers here in the sale room? Obviously not. 950? 950 bid at 950. 1,000. Where is 1,000 here in the sale room? Surely. 1050 if it helps. 1050 bid. At 1050, any more now? At 1050 bid, last call. He's got 1050 on the internet. He's looking for 11. At 1050, we all done at 1050. I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to withdraw the lot at that price. We had to be just slightly beyond that. The gambler's gone down. He got up to £1,050 here in the sale room. Yeah. Exactly the same price offered by Tim Hogarth. Of course, with Tim, there was no deduction of commission. Yeah, that's correct. It didn't sell because you had a reserve of £1,300. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your reaction? Back in the attic, I'm afraid, for another eight years, and we'll try again. I'm going to say, never mind the attic. <laughs> You've paid decent money for it. It is a beautiful item. Bring it out of the attic, get it in the home, enjoy it. Tim, you were on the money, mate, but it was still worth a little bit more than that. And next for George, bath time accessories with a groovy twist. Um, so you brought in for me today is Beatles talcum powder. Yeah, well, 1963. 1963, yeah. we've got a very precise date. Yeah. You bought it yourself? <laughs> out there, yeah, yeah. And how much have you used? Should we find Nothing, out? Nothing, hardly. Look at that, it's still yeah, all there. Yeah, it's nearly full. You're still a big Beatles fan? Not really, no, not, not really. now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're selling it? Well, yeah, I've had it yeah. just been sat in a drawer, so... OK, fair enough. I'm trying to think if I should say anything about the Beatles, but everybody should know, shouldn't they? Oh, yeah. One of the so. greatest bands ever. Ever, yeah. Um, iconic. Um, I've never seen this before. It's an interesting bit of ephemera. Um, hot price. Let's see how we go. Put down 20, 30. Yeah. Immediately shaking your head. Yeah. Um, so I was going to exchange that, but I won't. I'll be extra fair. Make that 40. Put that back on, and we're at 50. Another 30. Just thinking of another 30. Mm. I've come in to help George. You see, you must remember George is a much younger man. Yes, he doesn't remember. He's not age quite age. as familiar with the no, Fab Four are. as we are. No, he's not. Basically, both the independent value and the auctioneer, they're all within the 50 to 80. Is it worth that? Is there someone going to pay 50 pounds plus? There are Beatles fans out there. They may pay that bit more, but it's your gamble. Think about it. Wise words from David. <laughs> um, well, I'm happy to do another 10. See Please. where we go. There's one there. 60 pounds. Another 10. Another 10. <laughs> and done. And done. And done. What's that going to cost me? 70, 70 quid. Yeah. Go on then. There we go. 70 pounds. Deal. Deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you. Coming up, it's children's hour. Right, who have we got here? We've got Dr Chick, very nice. Poor Bunny Bobtail. You're not remotely interested in this, are you? <laughs> Will Karen's cash get his attention? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's still buzzing in the dealer's den with people bringing in bags and boxes of all shapes and sizes and you never know what will come out. And Karen did not expect this. What's a big raffy taffy like you doing with this lovely little nursery tea Quite for two? But for your mum. Because ah, she didn't want to come in front of the cameras. So. That explains it. So um, is this something you played with when you were little? No. <laughs> Right, OK, so what do you know about it? Did she say anything? The only that she got it about seven years ago from a car boat. And did she say how much she paid for it? Yes. And I bet you're not going to tell me, no. are you? No, they do usually don't. So, right, we got Dr Chick, very oh. nice. We got Paul Bunny Bobtail. You're not remotely interested in this, are you? You're just representing Mum. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the factory. Um, just for our benefit, really. Corona, made in England. Right, it's a typical nursery, tea for two, made in about 1930s. 
and as they go, it's in not bad nick. We've got a good shape on the teapot here, good 1930s shape. So we've got the two cups and saucers, we've got the two little tea plates, and we've got the sugar basin and jug. And it looks in quite good order. Yep. So, presumably Mum said what you've got to fetch, and uh, so it's just down to me now to put some money on the yep. table, isn't it? Can't say you're filling me with enthusiasm on this one. <laughs> OK. Right, this is going to be my bid. £30. Done. Is that a no? Were you expecting a lot more than that? No, not a lot. Not a lot more. Do you know, do you know I, I have got a few of these at the moment, and they should fetch more, but unfortunately they don't. Yeah. Although this is really pretty and in good nick. Right, I will stick another fibre, but I don't think it's going to make that much difference, is it? Is that your final offer? That is my final, final offer. What instructions have you got? Are you going to reveal? To try and get 40. 40? Well, I'm not going to 40. Well, I'm not doing it. So is that a deal, then? Yes. OK, well done. Thanks. So before you escape, how much did your mum pay? 15. 15 pounds. Yeah. Oh, she's away, then. She's yeah. proper dealer. Yeah. <laughs> Mike did his mum proud. Now, will David fancy a timepiece that was all the rage in the early 1900s? And you've brought here a lovely Edwardian clock. Yes. Or thereabouts. Yeah. About 1900-ish. Is this something you've had a long time, Malcolm? Maybe? About 20 years, David, yeah. Well, it'd be cheap then, then, when you bought it. I think I paid about £100 for it. Then. That was a lot of money in those days. Yeah, but it was... Um, what attracted me to it was the style, you know? The inlays and... Yeah, you know. and the... The yeah. nature of the thing, yeah. Yeah, well, it's a lovely mahogany case, and yeah. this is all inlaid here with a bit of mother of pearl there. That's right, yeah. It's a lovely dial, isn't it? It like is nice, yeah. Like a sunburst dial. Mm. And the retailer on the dial, it says Dent, which is a very famous clockmaker, but it's not... That's this right. is a French movement in this clock. That's correct, yeah. As you well know. Yeah. Are you a clock man, then? Do you collect clocks? Yes, I collect clocks. Ah, yeah. well, here we are. It's got a, a very nice, quite standard French movement in it, striking on a gong. Yes. So there it is, a very nice clock. So um, what are you selling it for, Malcolm? Well, I've just uh, moved the boat and uh, I think it's time to, uh, for it to go. Updating but itself, it's, yes. It's a lovely clock. I mean. It is, it's very, very nice. I like these Edwardian inlaid clocks. Yeah. I think they're uh, super things. It's got a nice shape here, hasn't it, too? That's it, David, the shape. It's got yeah. a bit of shrinkage here on the woodwork. Yes, We, that's we could right. sort that out, though, couldn't we? I'm sure we could, yeah. So yeah. I'll get some dosh out, shall I, Malcolm? And uh, that'd be a good idea, David. Yeah. Well, I better start off with a hundred then. Is that any good? Are your money back? Not enough, David. I thought you were going to say that. They all say that to me. Do they? <laughs> I'll say a hundred and sixty pounds, Malcolm. No, I think uh, well, a bit more than that. Would you? A bit more than that, yeah. One eighty, and I'm about sort of. Uh, where I want to be, really, Malcolm. Should go a bit more. Well, I'm going to say £200, and that's going to be my lot. You can go to auction, you know that. Tell you what, David, mm. another £10, and we've got a deal. I don't want to give another tenner, Malcolm, sorry. I think that's a fair bid. Right. Your gain is my loss, then, David. That's Shall what we say. OK, you've had a good deal there, Malcolm. <laughs> Now, Tim is about to view a snapshot of Victorian life, but whose history is it? You brought a photograph album in today. Yes. Um, can we have a look at it? Yes. Let's see what we've got here. Now, is this a family album, Jim? Uh, no, it uh, belongs to my daughter. She found it in the house she moved into about 15 years ago, really? I think it was. Was it an old house, then, that she bought? Uh, no, no, a new <laughs> house. <laughs> Oh, my myth has just gone out of the window there, Jim. What we look for in, in Victorian and Edwardian photographs is something a little bit different, i.e. Uh, dogs, cats, horses, things like that, because yeah. when these photographs were taken, obviously, photography was quite an early process then, yes. you know, it was in its infancy. And um, 
this is why a lot of these photographs are so rigid because it took so long to take the photograph yes. you see so they all look a little bit stern and possibly a little bit frightened as well about what's happening yes i thought that yeah now looking at the clothing that they're wearing i would say it's going to be about 1860 in date yeah. so yeah. i think this will have been one family and they'll have added photographs as they were taken because it was quite um, an expensive process to have your photograph yes. taken in the Victorian times. So I can't find anything really novel in there, no. which is, is what they want. Yeah. Um, so I will make you an offer, Jim. Yes. Yeah, so but it, it won't be a big offer. <laughs> no. £20, Jim. No, it's a little bit more than that, please. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to be a lot more, I have to say. Um, £30. A uh, li little bit further. I, I just don't want to give any more than that for it, if I'm honest. I think I might get £40 for it, with the wind behind me. With a fiver. And it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not tempted, Jim. No. I'm not. 30 quid, that's all right for something that your daughter found in a cupboard. Ah, go on then. You sure? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you. bringing it along. And what's she going to spend the money on? Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> A lot more. Coming up, George is finding it hard to get his paws on these lions. One last stab. Are they destined to be the main attraction at auction? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Our dealers have provided plenty of entertainment here in Cleethorpes. And George is confident that this pair are crowd pleasers. What have you brought in for me? Two lions. I can see that. Did yes. they tell you any more? Um, not really. They've been in the family a long time. Right. Or were they your grandmothers or your mothers? Grandmothers. Lovers? Right. So we're going far back, aren't we? I reckon they date to about the, the middle of the 18th century. So about 1750s, 1760s. Okay. I think they're early. And I think they're British as well. Um, but there's no marks. No. We're not getting any clues, are we? No. Um, and they're a nice pair. I mean, I really like them. I love their faces. They're ever so naive. The way they're made is naive. I really like that about them. They don't look like lions, do they? No. Like faces. They're cartoon lions. Mm. So I'll try and start with what I think is a fair offer. I'm going to put down these red ones. Two, 100, three, 150, 200. I'm going to put 20 on top. And you're already shaking your head. No. No, you want more. Um, okay, so shall I start by doing a little swap? Yes. Okay, I'll swap that one. So we've got 250. And I so still you're shaking want a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> There's 300. Um, which, which for me, to be honest, is getting close ish. Shall I have a little go more? Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can make a buy. Okay. One, two, three. So we've got one, two, three, sixty. Yeah. Still shaking your head. Yes. <laughs> can you hear the roar of that line, Amelio? <laughs> what a cracking lot. We don't know exactly what they are. We don't think they're English. No. Nope. I think those lines are too pretty. They could be French. My guess is they're probably Paris, something like that. But they're fabulous. We think in the auction, these can do very well. Five to six hundred pounds is our lower estimate. <laughs> A thousand to fifteen hundred is the excitable <laughs> top estimate. I'm very excited. And unless you get over a thousand pounds on the table, I'm going to say, <laughs> see you at the auction. Okay, so we've heard what David said. Yes. Um, I'm more in agreement with the conservative estimate. <laughs> um, but I'm still going to try and have a go. One, two, four hundred. So there we've got 450, which is 
have to get about yeah. 520 at auction. Mm. One last stab, I'll put one more 20 on to make 470. Yeah, well, I think I've still got to auction. And you've made your mind up, haven't yes. you? Have you been to auction before? No. Well, you're no. going to enjoy it. I really hope it flies for you. If you get a couple of dealers there, they're going to do really well. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Now, when you came on the dealer's day, what did you think they were worth? A hundred quid? No, what did you think? No, I thought they were worth something, but not a lot. Well, when I saw them, my eyes nearly popped out. <laughs> I thought, what a cracking lot this is. Um, there is an estimation on them today of a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds. Now, what's your reaction to that? <laughs> well, shock. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. What should we say for them? Who's going to start with a thousand? Thousand pounds, anybody? 800 to go, five if we have to, then 500 pounds, 500 pounds bid, a lot of interest in these, 500, 550, at 550, 600. Creeping. 650, 700, Ooh. 750, 800, 850, 900. 900, we're getting close to the 950. reserve. 950. 950 bid, any more now? 1,000 pounds to a C at 950, we all done 1,000 pounds bid. At 1,000, we're in at 1,000 pounds. 1,000, we're at your reserve. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? 1,000 pounds, are we all done and finished? We're selling this time and going at 1,000 pounds. Gavel has just gone down 1,000 quid. <laughs> That's taken you by surprise. OK, £1,000, we have to take away the commission. That leaves us with £850. Please? Please, yes. Have you decided yet what to spend your money on? Shoes, no. jewellery? <laughs> Maybe shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all buy shoes? OK, £850, Shirley is taking home for something that when she brought it along on the dealer's day, thought it was worth just a small amount of money. A nice surprise for her. 850, real deal. <laughs> Cracking result. What a fabulous surprise. Enjoy shopping, Shirley. Now, have our dealers had any success? Tim bought the compact for 45 and sold it for 45. But he did manage to sell the photo album for a profitable 40 pounds. David sold the mantle clock for a disappointing 190 pounds. But he isn't quite ready to let go of that fabulous sovereign case. It's in lovely condition, exactly the sort of goods I'm looking for. Thank you very much. The Beatles talc proved popular as George sold it on for £100. Karen sold the children's tea set for £40 and... It tore off round this table a good one. I'm so excited to buy it. I love it and I think I could do all right with this. And she did, selling for £350. Yes, love it. 